time is like my soon to be ex. You think we could spoon up together, slide an arm around a waist just for old time sex? I mean, sex. Sex. But no, of course we can't. And now I know why. It's not me. It's X. Mm. Oh yes, the X factor. <laughs> Which slipped his mind during that. I can't go on anymore. I'm starved for love speech over dinner. Funny that. Being starved for love. I've been trying to tempt him for the last three years with candles, oil, lingerie, every advance repelled. I'm tired, I'm stressed, and now you want me to have sex? <laughs> Suddenly, he was buying Calvin Klein and Box, had his teeth cosmetically enhanced, lost weight, picked bites three times a day. Even with the kids, his love had no lungs. Because X, of course, has five languages and a PhD, <coughs> not to mention a hot body, and I bet a million dollars X is not a day of 30. The truth is, I said nothing. Let him say it all. You to the main course. Here's dessert, baby. Mm. <laughs> as we as writers know, um, you know, we're constantly eavesdropping, being voyeurs, you know, magpieing all over the show. Um, this time, I eavesdropped on a writer. Um, so this is called <clears throat> eavesdropping on a writer's notebook strategy. He's driving me, and his hands were like an orangutan's hands on the steering wheel, because the hairs on his arms were red, and he was, I think he was kind of old, and he was driving like this. And he was kind of giving me a lecture on voir dire, you know, legal terms and stuff. So I just pulled out my notebook and tried not to make a big deal of writing it down, <laughs> acting like, oh, voir dire, as I scribble. But really, I'm writing orangutan hands. <laughs> okay, for my last poem. <laughs> My last poem is after James Joyce's Ulysses, uh, Molly Blue. Do you know, I don't know if any of you have read Ulysses, I usually skip straight to the end of the best bit. Um, it's Molly Blue, um, it's fantastic. Anyway, the poem is after her favourite word, which is yes. <sighs> yes. And then I touched my finger to my lips to stroke away the cider and put it and it again. Yeah. I touched my finger to his lips and put it to mine, and our tongues went plunging, such a lush sweetness. The grass so springy soft on the cliff and the waves crashing below, and I had to catch my breath, and the night's perfume drowned that tap of lamb, and I thought of my first kiss. What was his name? Johnny, yes. His tongue so unexpected, <laughs> wriggling like an eel. <laughs> but this time, it felt different. And even his silence didn't matter when he stared, oh. stared at my breasts. And I let my hair slip loose, like that Cape Town girl. And you have moonlight in your eyes, he said. So I took him in my hand. And he whispered, would I? Ma petite baleine, he said. And I thought, I may as well, as well him as another. And the sea was swirling below us in a froth, the sky gorgeous with stars. And I suggested with my eyes that he ask again, and I knew he would. 
And then I urged him down, and he found his way through all my layers. And I might, I thought. Yes, I think I will say yes. <laughs>